in the last video we uh, talked about the correlation analysis and first we started off with the, what is correlation how do we interpret it and then we went on to analyzing it in SPSS in this lecture we'll be talking about the linear regression using SPSS so first of all we'll talk about what is regression uh, what is a simple and multiple regression then what are some of the important values that we interpret in regression, which is R squared, F statistics, beta, and T statistics. And then we will talk about uh, the fitness of a line in regression in which we'll be uh, using SPSS to fit a regression line in simple and uh, multiple regression analysis. So let's start. First of all, we need to understand what is linear regression. So these are going to be our topics. What is linear regression? What is multiple uh, uh, and simple regression? And we will also define the relationship and the models there. And then these uh, some values, R squared, F stats, beta, and T stats. And then at the end, we'll be using SPSS to calculate regression. Now, uh, we are not going to go into a lot of detail, but we'll be covering the very basics of linear regression. We use linear regression to analyze and to predict the relationship between two or more variables. So whenever we are interested in knowing the possible relationship between two or more variables, we use linear regression. Uh, based on the data of the variables, a line is actually modeled to predict a relationship. Uh, we can understand it better if we just look at this example. Now, this is a data from two variables. The one data is the years. As the years are changing from 1967 onwards, and data has been taken after every five years. So, uh, 67 is here, then five years after that, and 10, and then 15. And on this side, we have taken the percentage of adults who smoke. So looking at this value, the data says that in 1967, 40% uh, or 42% of the pe people, uh, adults used to smoke. And then after five years, the data says that uh, about 38% uh, of the people smoke and then this is the data and then this is the data now what this uh, these black dots are saying these are talking about the data uh, of the two variables plotted on a scatter plot so what regression does for us is that based on these small differences which is going sometimes it is going above the line sometimes it is going below the line based on these values of the data on two variables, one is the year and the other is the uh, adults who smoke, the number of and the percentage of the adults who smoke, based on the data of these two variables collectively, it makes a regression line. And by looking at this regression line, we can easily say that with the passage of time or after 1967, the percentage of people and the percentage of the adults who smoke actually is decreasing. So this is what uh, regression does for us is that for two variables and also for multiple variables, it gives us this line and which you fit based on the data. And you can easily predict what kind of relationship is there. Uh, between two variables or and if you're using a multiple regression, then you can also say what kind of relationship is there uh, among uh, different variables with the dependent variable. So uh, if you want to go more into details, then you have to read uh, about it and uh, uh, go and read some uh, good book about econometrics. But as we are covering just the basics, so we'll only be talking about uh, this scatter plot. Now, some important things that we need to understand is that if we are saying that we are going to run a simple regression, this simply means that at one time, 
we are using one independent variable and one dependent variable. So what we are trying to do, we are trying to measure a relationship of one variable which is independent with the one dependent variable. So if we have one independent variable with one dependent variable, we will call it simple regression. We will also recall it when we are going to go to our SPSS analysis. One thing that we uh, need to make sure here is that in linear regression at one point of time, you cannot use more than one dependent variable. We will also talk about it when we go to SPSS. But remember that in linear regression, you can only use one dependent variable at one time. But we can use one or more than one variables at one point of time when we are uh, doing the regression analysis. So if we are analyzing or we are uh, analyzing the regression with one independent variable with dependent variable, we call it simple regression. But if we have more than one variables with dependent variable, example two or more than two, we will call it multiple regression because now we have multiple independent variables and one dependent variable. Now, another thing that we need to know here is that when we were saying that we are using a simple regression, we are uh, measuring one relationship. This can be any variable. This can be any variable based on your theoretical framework. But this is one relationship. But at the same time, this is one model. This is also one model. Now, when we move to this multiple regression, here we are measuring two relationships, one with this IV to this TV, one with this IV to this TV. There are two relationships that we are measuring, but we are measuring one model. So here we have one model, one relationship. Here we have one model, but two relationship. And if we add on one more independent variable here, and suppose we have three independent variables and uh, we are regressing it with one dependent variable, then again, we will be using one model, but we are checking three relationships. And you can add any number of variables as independent variables to regression model, but it'll be called a multiple regression if it, it has more than one variables as independent variables. So this is also something that we need to remember. Now, what are some of the important values that we interpret in linear regression? Although there are some other important values that we need to uh, keep in mind, uh, but these are the four important values that we usually study uh, in most of the researches. That is R square, F statistics, beta, and T statistics. Now, R square uh, will actually tell you or it explains the variation in dependent variable because of the independent variables in a model. So here we analyze that how much variation in percentage is there in dependent variable based on one or more variables that are there in the model. So this is how you try and explain it. We will also talk about it when we will analyze uh, the regression in SPSS. So suppose if the value of R square is 0 0.59, we will say that 59% of the variation in DV, which is dependent variable is happening because of the independent variables or variable. The second thing is the F statistics. These are also the values that you get in uh, your uh, regression analysis. It predicts the model fitness of regression. And we are really interested in the level of significance. So for now, if the value of F statistics is significant, we will say that 
the model is fit for regression. And the significance uh, for now, we will only say that if the F stat significance value is less than 0 0.05, then we will call it a significant value. Uh, you can uh, see my other video, uh, what's the deal with significance for more, more detail. Uh, the beta, beta value actually indicates that with one unit change in independent variable, the beta units will change in dependent variable. For example, for example, if you say, if you're trying to measure the relationship of income with expenditures, and if we get a beta of say 0 0.50, it means that if your income will increase one dollar, 0.5 dollar, your expense are going to increase. This is what it predicts. So beta with one unit change in IV, which means independent variable, the beta, whatever value of beta you get, beta units will change in DV. We will also explain it when we'll go to the SPSS analysis part. And the last is the T statistics. The T statistics are actually used to determine if you should support or reject your null hypothesis. Now, while you're listening to this, please be very sure that you have the idea of alternate and null hypothesis, because sometimes people say that if the T value is significant, you accept your hypothesis. So when you say accept your hypothesis, you're saying you accept your alternate hypothesis. But when people are saying that if T values are significant, and you need to reject your hypothesis, they're talking about to reject the null hypothesis. So if, if you're not getting this point, please make sure that you understand what is null and alternate hypothesis. So these are the four important values that we study in regression. But one last thing here is that these two values, the R square and the F statistics, they talk about the regression model. Remember that we were talking here that this is one model, but one relationship. This is one model, two relationships. If we talk about R square and F statistics, they both of them talk about the model part. They talk about the how much variation is happening in DB because of all the IVs that are there. But this beta, uh, unstandardized coefficient, or it is also known as beta, and T statistics, they talk about the relationship part. So if you just look at these models again, now this is one model, this is one model, but we are measuring two relationships. So for this one model, we will get one value of R square, one value of uh, F statistics, but we will get two values of beta because we are looking at two relationships and we will get two values of T stat statistics. Why? Because these upper two uh, values, they talk about the model and these lower uh, uh, coefficients and T statistics, they talk about the relationship. Now, let's go to SPSS and see how we uh, analyze or we run the regression analysis. Again, you will have to go to your uh, analyze window. In the analyze, you need to go to regression, linear. Once more, analyze, regression, linear. There are so many types of regressions, but this time we're only going, going to go for a linear regression. So when we just click here, we have this kind of window with us. Now, if you remember what we've been doing in our last videos. Now let's talk about how innovation as a dependent variable is being affected by the formalization. Now, one important thing to note here is that the moment we, we place 
dependent variable one dependent variable the next time we try and place any more variables in the dependent part the sps is not going to allow us why because in linear regression as we talked about there can only be one dependent variable at one point of time but we can add as many variables as we wish in the independent list so you can have multiple independent variables but you can have only one dependent variable now we are for now we are only interested in knowing how formalization affects innovation or in other words we want to see a relationship between formalization and innovation formalization is our independent variable and innovation is our dependent variable as it is also written on this analysis map so for now just click okay and these are the results that we are going to get now if you just look at these results we have these uh, three tables first of all it is saying r square which is 0.2 5.8. Now this means that 25.8% of the variation in innovation is happening because of this formalization. Then if we move on to our F statistics, the F value is 86.44. But the, but the most important thing is to look at the significance value. Significance, uh, how much we want it? We want it to be less than 0 0.05. So it is definitely less than 0 0.05. It is 0 0.000. Although it is not absolutely 0 0.00000, there, there, there might be some number at some decimal level, but it is definitely less than 0 0.05. So we are fine with our F value because we can say that model is fit for regression. We have 25.8% variation in DV because of IV. The other thing that we need to look at is this beta, unstandardized coefficient. First, you get this constant. Uh, currently, we're not bothered about this constant and you can ignore these values, but we are interested in the beta of formalization, which is uh, uh, present in front of the formalization. Now it is saying negative 0.527. So this negativity means that with the increase in formalization, the innovation will decrease. How much it is going to decrease? 0.527 units. So if formalization is going to increase one unit, the innovation is going to decrease 0.527 units and do not interpret it in percentage you never uh, interpret your coefficients into percentage and you always interpret r square into percentage so make sure you're uh, interpreting it right so first value is r square f statistics and its significance third is the beta the last thing that we need to see here is the t statistics in front of this formalization so if you look at this t value this is saying minus 9.297 but more importantly here it is saying 0 0.000 or 0 0.000 which means it is definitely less than 0 0.05 and we are going to say that based on this t statistics and its significance value we will reject our null hypothesis or accept our alternate hypothesis in uh, today's uh, research writing techniques people do not usually go for null hypothesis most of the papers and thesis that you look at they do not have the null hypothesis therefore if you have t value which is significant you can also say that you have accepted your hypothesis but this actually means that you are accepting your null uh, sorry alternate hypothesis and you are rejecting your null hypothesis so make sure what we are saying and what we are doing so this what is this this is a simple regression why because there was one independent variable with one dependent variable that is why we got one value of r square 
one value of f, one value of beta, one value of t. Now let's go back to this shortcut, linear regression, and put some more variables. If we just put another variable, which is employee creativity, and we are going to run this analysis. Now this time what we are doing, we are doing the multiple regression analysis. This is a multiple regression, why? Because there's only one in dependent variable with two independent variables. So let's just go and click OK. Now this time, it is going to give us some different results. And if you just look at this R square, it has increased because we have uh, given it one more independent variable. So 0.729, which means 72.9% of the innovation is being explained by these two variables, formalization and employee creativity. If you look at this F statistics, we can easily say that it is a significant value because it is less than 0 0.05. So our model is fit for regression. The same way, if you look at these betas, point minus 0 0.214, which means that when formalization is going to increase, the innovation is going to decrease. The same way we have a significant value of uh, T statistics in front of formalization. So we are going to reject our null hypothesis or we are going to accept our alternate hypothesis. Now, what about employee creativity? Employee creativity is 0.853 unstandardized coefficient, which is beta. So this says that with one unit change in employee creativity, 0.853 units will increase or will change in innovation. In the same way, if we look at these, uh, look at these T values and it's significant, it says that it is a very significant value, highly significant. Therefore, we accept the hypothesis. So this is how you actually try and run uh, your uh, regression. And these are the values that we get out of our linear regression. Now, again, the same tip, please do not copy and paste the same tables into your thesis or into your paper. Make uh, separate tables for which you can watch my uh, other video, how to make tables in uh, APA. So always try and make different tables. Now, the last thing that we uh, want to see in SPSS is that the regression line that we saw in our uh, example of uh, percentage of smokers and the years, how can we do it here? So for that, you can go to these graphs, legacy dialogue, and scatter plot. So what we've done, we went to graphs, legacy dialogue, and scatter plot. So let's just click scatter plot. It asks you what kind of scatter plots do we want? We want a simple one. So now here you can see that it is saying, this is what you're going to see. So here it is saying that what kind of uh, variables you want the scatter plot for. So as we can see that formalization is our independent variable and innovation is our dependent variable. Also remember that you, uh, when you make a graph, there's a y axis and there's an x axis. And in the regression language, you also call uh, y variables as dependent variables and x variables as independent variables. And currently we are only doing it for uh, the simple regression. So let's just click OK. It is going to give you this scatter plot. This is a scatter plot based on formalization and innovation. But how do we get that regression line that we were talking about? So you need to just double click it. So when you double click it, you're going to see this separate window in which you can add it. So you have two methods. One, that you can just click this add fit line add total or you can also go to this element and fit line at total. So this is going to give you a 
regression line. So you can use any of these methods to get this regression line fit. Now, one other thing which might not be of your concern, but is going to be very valuable. How can we have a scatter plot of multiple regression, which means if we want to see the impact of uh, two or more variables on dependent variable, how can we do that? So for that, there's a little complicated process. You go to, go to analyze regression, linear, and suppose we are going to go with these two variables. And this time you just need to click one more thing that is save and unstandardized beta. So ye, this is going to save your results. So just click continue and okay. It's going to give you the same results as we got from our multiple regression. But this time, what it did to your uh, SPSS window is that it has created another variable, which is known as uh, this variable, predicted variable. Now, what has it has done for you is that it has created values based on these two variables. So if you want to know the fit line, regression fit line of multiple regression, which means of these two variables and their impact on innovation. Now that we have created this variable, we'll go back to our graphs, legacy dialog, scatter plot, simple, define. But this time, what we are going to do is we will be keeping our innovation to dependent variable. And this un unstandardized saved values as a product of those two variables in the X axis and click OK. Now this scatter plot is based on those two variables. And just click to this element and fit line. Now this line is based on the multiple regression fit line. And you can also say that it is also talking about that it's a linear line. So this is how uh, you can do the analysis in SPSS for regression. Uh, next time in the next video, we will be talking about some very important concepts related to mediation and moderation. To summarize this video, you can say that we have studied about what is regression, what is simple and multiple regression, what are the values of R square F statistics beta, how to do this uh, regression analysis in SPSS, and then we also draw some scatter plot and uh, other related things. So thank you very much for now. And in the next video, we'll talk about moderation and mediation analysis using Andrew F. Hayes process. Thank you very much.